positive thinking doesn't work. So stop that, agents, stop that. It's not about positive because what happens if you try to be positive is that by 10 o'clock when something bad happens, <laughs> what happens then is all of a sudden uh, we actually feel worse about ourselves than when we started if we fall negative because we're like, I can't even do positive well. And so it's not positive. It's actually useful. So I would say useful actions. What are the most useful actions? What would be a useful thing for me to be thinking about in this situation? And then useful belief really comes down to how we see the world. This is important stuff, I think. You are listening to Elevate, the official podcast of Elite Agent for real estate industry sales professionals, property managers, and leaders. Each episode, we bring you the best minds in business and real estate to help you list more, sell more, and elevate your results. To connect with all things Elite Agent, including the latest news, coaching, and features, subscribe at our website, EliteAgent.com. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a Chris Helder podcast. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it's the end of the year. It is the end of the year. Merry Christmas, everybody. We made it. We did. It's been a crazy year, hasn't it? It has been a lot of ups and downs this year. And we've all come out the other side. We're still here. We're still alive. Our butts are still pointing the right way. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> well, what have we got? We've only got about a week to go, and then it's going to be 2020. I know. Crazy to actually I, I think that, isn't it? I actually don't know where the last year went, but in some ways I do, and in some ways, you know, it feels like it's gone by in a bit of a blur of bushfires and really icy cold temperatures and, you know, all that sort of thing. I've been saying for a while now, I don't think that we've got defined seasons anymore. We've just got random weather events. Well, it is true, and December, Greta Thunberg, time person of the year. Who would have thunk it? A little 17 year old telling us all how it should be. Exactly. Good honour for speaking up. So this podcast, as is traditional, we have a special guest on, Chris Helder, obviously. We all love a bit of Chris Helder's useful belief advice, and he's going to give us his useful belief on 2019. So just to give you all a bit of background, what I generally do before we record our very last podcast is I go back over the whole year, I look at what happened in Australia in the news, I look at what happened in the world, and I look at what happened in real estate and try and get some See patterns. there's some linkages there, yeah. <laughs> The big one, obviously, is climate change. Yeah, it is. And it's part of everybody's conversation these days, isn't it? It's no longer a fringe topic that yeah. gets discussed and unpacked by certain groups. Yeah. Everyone is talking by about it. Yeah. yeah. We all sort of need to do our bit next year. I'm a firm believer in that. And I think that the way that trends in homes will go will reflect that as well. Mm. Looking back over the last year, lots of moves, changes. The biggest move, obviously, Gavin Rubenstein going out into his own business. That was pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Around about the same time that ScoMo got re-elected, yep. and everyone was quite excited about that. Maybe Gav had something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, this was a real year of different comings and going. You know, like, so Purple Bricks left in a blaze of purple instead of a blaze of smoke, which is, you know, what we've been dealing with. And, you know, for you guys in proper management particularly that have been dealing with this for ongoing months we do hope that you get a bit of a break over Christmas and that you're able to relax well I hope all of you are able to relax rest recharge and come back to 2020 with with renewed vigor with renewed vigor as we will so this was a fun podcast because as you said you picked news from Australia globally and also in real estate and we had an opportunity to be able to talk to Chris about each one of these yeah. and sort of get his useful belief take on this but it wasn't so much just how to interpret events but what it is that you can actually take out of what's happened throughout the year and apply it into your own business and the way in which you're um, going to see 2020 in. So we covered everything from Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> because music and art is important. You know, when you're having a bad day, you need to be able to put a bit of Freddie Mercury on. But yeah, everything from that, which are just little quick tips on how to pick yourself up if you're having a bit of a bad moment, to you can see, like I often say to people, that there is no new news. It's just the same things happening to new people. Mm. So as, as sure as the tide goes in and out, good things are going to happen, bad things are going to happen, mm. useful beliefs is what you believe around those things and how you deal with them. And if you can get your head around that, you're going to have an amazing 2020. So out of this podcast, we discussed a ton of topics and there was a lot of great takeaways out of this. You put the pen to paper. We always put the pen to paper. So the action guide will be available for a week or so after this podcast goes live. While you're having a bit of downtime, looking at 
extra would be a really great thing to do. There we go. There's just one little cell before Christmas. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so extra is where we deliver the podcast notes to you. And they're so good that you know, I'm sort of blowing my own trumpet a bit there. But, you know, even if you don't have time to listen to a half hour, 40 minute podcast, you can skim through the notes and see what's relevant to you. Our elves are going to be coming in through into January and they're going to be printing out extra for the January issue covering all of the podcasts that have been going on in December. So extra doesn't stop. So if you are an extra subscriber, you'll still get that little package in the mail from us. First week of January. First week of January, that's yeah. right. Able to you know, sort of reflect on what happened, pick up all of those great takeaways from the podcast throughout December and put them into action for a cracking start of 2020. So those links, if you happen to be listening in, eliteagent.com forward slash extra to sign up to extra, eliteagentelevate.com if you'd like to download the show notes from this very special edition. Speaking of which... Let's get on to it. It is. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Sam. So welcome to the podcast, Chris Helder. Hey, hey, thanks so much for having me. Merry Christmas. What? How could it possibly be that time already? <laughs> I know. it's uh, This year has gone like a rocket, hasn't it? Mm, it's just disappeared upon us. You know, so it felt like yesterday we were saying, God, 2020 is so far away, a yeah. few weeks' time. Yeah, we did episode 100 of the podcast about halfway through the year and now here we are at, this is it for the year, this is our last podcast of the year. Oh, well, what an honour to be on your last podcast, that's good. We saved the best to last. No, oh, there you go, thanks, that'll butter me up, that'll, that'll, that'll do. So tell us a bit about your year, what's been happening for you in 2019? Been an amazing 2019, we'll have finished doing 176 presentations this year, which is an all-time high for me. One every two days. It's about four a week because I take 10 weeks a year off. So it comes up to about four a week. So I've been incredibly busy and it's a year where I think a lot of people have been looking for techniques, mindset shifts, and really the tools to survive, thrive in challenging times. And what we actually need to do right now and what uh, people should be doing right now to make a difference in these times. Has it been a different kind of conversation you've been having over the year as opposed to previous years? Like, have you been finding that your crowds have been reacting differently? Uh, big difference this year, I think, in terms of how the audiences are reacting uh, across the board, both in sales and property management. I think right now, really, we're dealing in a world of, of complete distraction. I think everything from the messages that the media are sending out there to buyers, the vendors, landlords, and including, I think, we are inundated right now with how we're supposed to live, how we're supposed to be. Uh, the way we're supposed to sell, I think the way we're supposed to eat, the way we're supposed to act, we're not allowed to age, we're competing against airbrushing, and on and on. And, and I'm really talking about that it is a time of complete overwhelm for a lot of people. Right now, I think it's more important than ever that we have discussions around the stuff that actually counts and the stuff that actually doesn't count. Because there's a lot of people spending a lot of time right now working on things that don't actually matter. And if we can figure out what's the stuff that actually matters and what's the stuff that doesn't, What's the stuff that needs to be done and what needs to be delegated? And obviously, the industry of real estate has a lot of people that are very um, controlling and their businesses controlling what they do and they don't like to delegate. So really making the most, uh, maximizing the time around any producing activity. It has been an interesting year, 2019, both in and outside of the real estate industry and probably one of the toughest years that we've had for a while. Like mm. as we're about to do with you, Chris, we're about to sort of do a bit of a recap of 2019 in all of its glory. Yep. And as I was kind of putting this together, I was thinking, geez, you know, like between, you know, like what's been going on with natural disasters and weather events and things like that to what's happened in the real estate industry in terms of elections and interest rates and, yep. you know, all that sort of thing. It has been one of the toughest years on record. But before we get into that, I'd like this theme leading up to Christmas to be one of your favorites, obviously, Chris, which is that of useful belief, which you wrote a great book on because, you know, like while times are sort of tough and things like that, it's obviously not great to dwell on those tough things. It's better to have a useful belief. And just in case there is anyone on the planet who hasn't come into contact with what you see as useful belief, can you give us a quick definition? Absolutely. Quick snapshot, positive thinking doesn't work. So stop that, agents, stop that. It's not about positive because what happens if you try to be positive is that by 10 o'clock when something bad happens, <laughs> what happens then is all of a sudden uh, we actually feel worse about ourselves than when we started if we fall negative because we're like, I can't even do positive well. And so it's not positive. It's actually useful. So I would say useful 
actions. What are the most useful actions? What would be a useful thing for me to be thinking about in this situation? And then useful belief really comes down to how we see the world. This is important stuff, I think. Our brain totally controls what we see. And if you have a useful belief about the world, for example, this is the best time in the history of the world to be alive. Is that true? Well, absolutely. For, for you, it's true. Mark, for, for Sam, it's true. For me, it's true. You know what? Ultimately, though, truth doesn't matter. And I say this respectfully in that we get a lot of people who decide they see tough times and they see horrible times and they see bad times. And when they see all those things, their brain's going to go find it. Instead of actually saying, all right, hang on, I'm not saying these aren't, you know, there's not adversity out there. There's difficult times out there. There's difficult situations out there. There's reality out there. But at the same time, this is the best time in the history of the world to be alive. Is it true? I don't know, but it's useful. Because I know one thing, the best agents in the world see opportunities in every market. This is the best time in the history of the world to be in real estate. True? I don't know. It's useful, right? It's useful. It is. It is. Actually, I'll give you something else useful, guys, is that, so I don't know if any of us believe in Chinese astrology, but I did read somewhere that this is the end of a 60-year Chinese astrology cycle. Wow. So so mm. this is like 2020 is new beginnings, and it's supposed to be very, very, very lucky. But also, and it's a phenomenal useful belief. And you know what? This is new beginnings. This is absolutely the day we draw the line in the sand. And, and mm. the, I mean, I think one of the fundamental things that's critical about useful belief is this. I'm not saying we don't have a reality. We have a reality. But here's the thing. Change it or don't change it. But if you're not going to change it or can't change it or won't change it, then you might as well come up with a useful belief about it. And plenty of people can get out of real estate. That's fine. Just change it. Go do something else. Sometimes quitting something that's not working in your life's a good thing. But if you're not going to change it, well, then you fire up and dial in. 2020, best time in the history of the world to be in real estate. Best time in the history of the world to be alive. Life begins at insert age. And I'm big on this one. You know, if you're 77 years old, life begins at 77. And you'll move different. Life begins at 50. And we all do need to know the survival rate on the planet is 0%. None of us are getting out of here alive. In 100 years' time, we're going to be nothing more than a paragraph on Ancestry.com. So this is our time. <laughs> Right. And if we got that down, that this is our time, 2020 is the best time in the history of the world to be alive. You go there, you'll start to see, well, it's a beautiful day out there. It's beautiful opportunities everywhere. All right. Well, let's recap 2019, shall we? Let's you do ready, it. ready, ready to go on a bit of a journey? Let's go. So, so January started in a rhapsody of Bohemia or uh, Freddie Mercury on our TV screens in the form of Rami Malik winning all those awards. Yep. So that was what was going on. In entertainment, in Australia, we had the four hottest days on record in South Australia where the temperatures reached 49 degrees. And then up north in New York and, and further north, they had the polar vertex where the US Postal Service was suspending record low temperatures. So on one end of the planet, we're almost on fire with the hottest temperatures. Mm. On the other end of the planet, the mail can't be delivered <laughs> because it's too cold. Yep. The Oxford Dictionary said the word of the year is climate emergency. And you can see this is a theme throughout all of the months of 2019. And I really think this is a trend. Well, it's not even a trend. It's, it's a thing that real estate agents are going to need to be mindful of yep. as people get more and more and more tuned into you know, people like Greta Thunberg and, and so on, that we really must act. What are your thoughts? Useful belief thoughts? Life thoughts? Mm. First of all, you yeah. use, let's go to Freddie Mercury first. Uh, <laughs> and that's the, yeah. uh, my useful belief is it is awesome to still be in love with 80s music and it is awesome still in your hotel room by yourself to hold your own personal 1980s rock concerts. I just want to say that, all right? Definitely yeah. the best music. Okay. All right, that's it. Come we go there. Now, while we're talking about Freddie Mercury, you're going to talk about the Mercury rising. And um, But let me say this. I, I think at the end of the day, we need to identify what's important in our lives, what's useful in our lives. And without question, it is time to act. And having said that, I think every single person can decide within the context of their lives what they can do. Now, mm. I'm walking the thin line of overwhelm versus contribution versus managing life. And I really want to just say this. I think every single person needs to absolutely have a conscious look at their role in the environment, their role in their ability to contribute to what's happening that fits into the context of their life, which empowers them. There's 
the frustrating thing, obviously, for a lot of agents is that they do feel overwhelmed about we, we want to be political, but we want to we want to look after our family. We want to have still want to get all those hours at the office, and we still want to find time to go to the gym. And 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 I am just very conscious of overwhelm. And I think for everybody to stop and just take a moment and really think about what are the things in their life that are important. I'm talking to agents right now about sort of six things that are important to every agent. Number one is family, obviously, whatever that means to everybody who's out there. Number two is work. Obviously, this is your business. This is your job. This is your, this is your livelihood. Number three that I'm talking to people about is friends. Number four, health, whatever that means to them. Five is me time, which is obviously a yoga class and meditation, what's important to them. And number six is community. For everybody, we got to balance these six things in our life. And I say balance, it's about focus and decide, you know, what are the things? And when we take a look at things like climate change, it is a climate emergency. So what can we all do? What can everybody do that fits in the reality uh, of their business and their life that they can feel good about contributing? And for others, that's going to be a greater thing. And for some right now listening, they might not have done anything and they think, hey, you know what? That's a good one. I'm, I'm going to pick it up next year. That'll be good. And I think it is something that people need to grapple with in their own mind. I mean, you can take the position of climate change. That's just far too big for me to make a difference. Mm. But then if everybody in collection makes a small change, then those incremental changes all add up to one big change. Yeah, the one percent is Spot on the money. Coldplay just released a new album, right? Mm. But they're not touring because they can't do it in a sustainable way. They said the environmental yeah. impact of doing a global tour for their new album was yeah. just going to be too great. So they've um, just canned the whole idea of, of doing a global tour. Yeah, which is big, right? Huge. Let's move on to February. So February, we've gone from climate emergency, which was the whole year, to uh, banking emergency, which was pretty much the, <laughs> the whole year too, with the Royal Commission into banking in Australia. And I guess this this was kind of the real turning point, I think, in the market when people were very uncertain about what the outcome was going to be. Mortgage brokers were a bit worried about where their trail books were going to go. And then everyone kind of got a bit, oh, let's wait and see about the property market. And over in real estate, some interesting stuff started happening. So first of all, realestate.com.au rolled out agent ratings and reviews. And there's this other little company that I've been watching all year called Hamlet, a co-living company who's mm. rolled into Australia. So again, this is um for people that don't want to rent either long-term or short-term and don't want to buy, they can go and actually just live with some like-minded people now. And I've said a few times this year, I think this is going to be a real trend moving into the, the roaring 20s. Is that yeah. what we're calling them? The ah. roaring 20s <laughs> times two. Is that people are going to want to live differently. It's not like we have to live near where we work anymore. And I think this is going to create a bit more of a trend towards living with people that we want to live the way that we want to live and doing, you know, being a bit more nomadic. What are your thoughts? It was an amazing year. Obviously, I did a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of mortgage broken conferences this year. Obviously, useful belief was at the forefront of understanding that we have a reality. And in that reality, again, this is something we couldn't change, right? This was this Royal Commission majorly impacted that industry. It majorly impacted real estate. And again, if we can't control it, what's the useful belief about it? Useful belief is let's go out there and actually do the best we can to educate the clients that we've got, who's in the market. And just one thing for the agents, you know, I think we get so sometimes blocked into this idea of I have to get an appraisal so I can get a market appraisal. Therefore, I can get a proposal out so I can get, and we get in that sort of formal process. I'm just advising people to have real estate conversations. And talk to 10 times as many people as you were and just have conversations. Like one conversation leads to the next. Oh, and I've got a friend that's doing this. Just, you know, again, to casualize it a little bit so that we're having more real estate conversations. As far as Hamlet and, and trends go around living, I mean, there's going to be a lot of change that's going to happen. And I think, again, we can't control that as agents. I think what we can control is going out there and talking to as many people as we possibly can about the industry we're passionate about. What about yourself, Mark? What have you seen? I'm really quite interested in what Hamlet is doing because it's taking the co-living arrangements and really turning it on its head in, in creating buildings or premises that are, are specifically designed so that it's the dorm 2.0. Build to rent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, like, sort of picking up on what you were saying, is that it's like-minded people living in micro-communities that they want to be in. So, you know, a bunch of musos 
you know, mm. the, the, um, the, the, yeah. the, the, the building may have its own, you know, sort of, you know, mini soundstage, a mini recording studio in there or a bunch a, of actors. A podcast studio. A even. podcast studio even. But you can just see where that's got the potential to go. You know, so even talking to the Gen Zs, you know, so they really want to be, you know, sort of part of a, a larger community. Mm. And I think that's probably going to be a bit of a trend moving forward in that people are going to gravitate to people of their own ilk. I predict too that the subscription economy will really come into its own starting 2020. See, I think it's a great time to be in property management. <laughs> I think, you mm. know, like there's a lot of people saying property management's being disrupted and it is, but you know, like I actually think there are some major opportunities in property management because there are companies in the US now where you can, well, you can rent a car, you can rent a home, you can rent a dog, yep. you can rent your dress <laughs> for, for mm-hmm. a night out, you can rent pretty much everything, but it's just, what sort of things can you add on to a rental as a real estate agent? Yeah, and I think we're you know sort of like a self-managed investor may not have the capacity to be able to offer the services that a property manager is able to offer. You know, particularly if you're going into the subscription economy. You know, so if a property manager has got the ability to have that whole ecosystem around moving. Um, the opportunity to be able to just rent furniture. You know, so I think the whole home staging is going to go to that next level, not just for making the place look pretty for sale. It's going to be making it livable for, yeah. for a tenant. We ourselves are questioning the value of having a car. Yeah. You know, when we've got 30 odd share cars within a five minute walk around where we live. So mm. I think those sort of things are going to really change come 2020. Absolutely. Okay. Let's take a look at March. So. Well, in New South Wales, Gladys Berejiklian, how did, how did I go with that pronunciation? Degrade. Degrade. <laughs> <laughs> she was returned as Premier, and can we please let the records reflect that that light rail still is not working? <laughs> Hopefully it will be by Christmas. Kylie Jenner became the world's youngest ever billionaire at age 21. More climate strikes throughout the world as teenagers took inspiration from Greta Thunberg. Facebook got themselves in trouble, Mark Zuckerberg promising a more privacy-focused platform, and then closer to home. So we had Century 21 welcomed Warren McCarthy as their CEO. Australia's Capital Territory, so Canberra, won very big at the REIA Awards. And this was interesting. The REI Cube appointed a general manager for digital. And it's interesting because they were named on our, well, Antonia is an influencer and, and also they were named on our innovators list for the first, later in the year, they announced that their tenancy agreements were going to go blockchain. And I think that's the first of its kind in Australia. So March was quite an interesting month. Hmm. So we'll go age before beauty this time. We, actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who's We're just making it, making an assumption the there. You're both, you're both beautiful, Mark. Uh, look, I think the Facebook part of March was very interesting and, and it continued to trend. I mean, even in the last couple of weeks or months of 2019 was the Californian Privacy Act, which came around very similar to the European privacy legislations over there. So I think there's a lot more focus was coming into our conscious about is our data safe? Yeah, so how do we actually interact with all these devices that are around us that are continually listening? Yeah, I was going to say, is it too late? I mean, you know, like I I know that that phone there is listening to us right now because I'll go home and we'll get some sort of ad on Facebook about climate emergencies or Coldplay that we've been talking about today. So I think that's the really interesting one. And like we were even just um, discussing today about the reach you get these days from advertising on the social channels. Yeah. It's more and more difficult and hyper-targeted and locked down as to what you can and what you can't do on these platforms. So I think that was one of the big takeaways from myself. Yep. And what about you, Chris? I, I think it is too late. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's completely too late. But that's okay. I think recognizing that privacy probably has different context to what it had. And, um, you know, there's just no question about it. If you're talking in earshot of your Google Play, it's going to, you know, up comes the ads. I don't know. I, I think the reality is as agencies right now, I suppose from my end of things, I'm looking at it from the perspective of the agents themselves. And I'm, I'm just saying, you know, look, we got to make sure that, you know, everybody's got somebody mastering digital in their office. That's it. You know, and the RIQ is bringing somebody on. That's fantastic. But we've got to make sure 
you know, within our offices that we've got digital mastered. And then I think from the agent's perspective, they've got to be able to talk and communicate those messages to the vendors and landlords and, and uh, buyers and tenants and be able to talk about how their organization is able to separate out from other organizations in the way that they do target property. You're absolutely right, Chris. It's not good enough in 2020 for digital to be just something that you dabble in. It's mm. time to go pro. We need the experts on board. All right, April, the first home delivery service by drone be- begins in Canberra and it was done by Google, who, speaking of privacy, now own Fitbit. So they've now got... <laughs> Yeah, we're all wearing them. They're all tracking. <laughs> exactly, when they're going to die too. Yeah, what else happened in real estate? Okay, so yeah, big news in probably, you know, one of the biggest stories that we had in April is that um, Gavin Rubenstein left Ray White Double Bay and John McManus also moved back to McGrath. So 2019, we did see a lot of moves and changes in agents. Like sometimes, you know, normally we only see it a couple of times a year. We, we sort of, you know, lovingly call it the great agent migration because mm-hmm. we see, we see subscribers move on our list. Normally it's twice a year, but this year seems to be a year when people, there has been a lot of change in where people want to be. Chris, what do you think about that? I think any time there's challenge, there's going to be change. How's that sound? People, when things are going swimmingly, uh, usually don't get divorced. But I think when we're in markets that are changing, environments that are changing, people seek out opportunities to make sure that they're maximizing their income, maximizing the opportunities that they've got. And, um, you know, I think especially, you know, a lot of top end agents are going to seek out the best opportunities for themselves. And moving forward as well. Let's move on. The May was a big month. This wait and see that started happening around the Royal Commission in February came to a bit of a head in May with ScoMo being miraculously re-elected. And, you know, I think the real estate industry kind of breathed a collective sigh of relief when that happened because that meant that negative gearing was going to stay the way that it was. I think everyone was very worried that if Bill Shorten became Prime Minister, then the whole fabric of mum and dad investors as we knew them would get ripped apart. So that was a big event in May. Also in May, two new studies found eating processed foods leads to an early death. (laughs) So (laughs) there we go, award for stating the obvious. That happened in May. (laughs) You know, actually I read somewhere that we ingest something like 40,000 pieces of microplastic per year as humans, which also cannot be good for us. And then another piece of good news, so it was full of good news in May, was that, well, not good news for them, but Purple Bricks exited the building or exited the Australian building as in May as well. They decided that they were going to stop chasing three rabbits, being Australia, US and the UKs, because mm-hmm. they exited the US pretty much at the same time. So being a fixed fee discounter, I think there was a lot of a lot of agents that were kind of jumping up and down going, this is great. Number one, scammer is back. Number two, purple people are out. So May, Chris, your thoughts? Look, the election was huge, right? I mean, I think the election made a difference to all the people that I deal with, you know, in financial services. I think huge, huge changes there. I, you know, interesting about the microplastics. People are talking about this all of a sudden. This is like mm. it, all over the place at the moment with the microplastics. And I, it is a time that... I think we're seeing a shift right now, and I would certainly be encouraging agents to take this shift on board. And I think we're seeing a shift right now where we are aware, and of course, you know, one of my biggest things is energy and having energy on stage and be able to do 157 flights in a year and be able to travel around and get up every day and be on stage. I think right now, every agent could really have a good look at the connection between their intake on on, on Food, not processed food, better food, making sure that we are as healthy as we can possibly be and a useful belief that, hey, this is the best time in the history of the world to live in Australia with this political system and, uh, you know, because this is all we got. So uh, let's go out there and, uh, and make the most of what is opportunity. Yeah, one of the things which I heard this year, and that was actually from you, Sammy, was that if you don't filter the food that you eat, you are the filter. Yeah, filter or be the filter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so there is a, a great amount of focus and awareness of what we're putting into ourselves. And, you know, so sort of moving forward, hopefully we're all going to be a healthier nation for it. Well, funny you should mention that. We've got a couple of guests coming up straight off the bat in the new year, Andrew May and Victoria O'Sullivan, who are going to get everyone off the right track because, look, I'm a fan believer. I've been on a bit of my own journey this year that, um, you know, I'm not saying that you need to change the world, but I definitely think I had a bit of a health scare about this time last year and I realised very quickly that 
if you don't make time to be healthy, then you won't have time to do other things later on. Mm. Like it will, it will happen to you. Like, mm. you know, whether, whether you like it or not. And I think, you know, whether you've had a wake up call like me or not, I was told I had a bio age of 80. <laughs> it was my wake up call. I didn't want to be that old. I'm not even 50. But the thing is, is if you're in doubt, if you want to make change and you're in doubt about making changes, just go buy a Fitbit and read James Clear's Atomic Habits, the two best things I reckon I've done in the whole of 2019. Hands down. There you go. There you go. Hot tip. Okay, so June. In June, the property market, like after everyone breathed this big sigh of relief in May, everyone in in June kind of went, oh, great. So there was the property market experience, what we sort of termed the ScoMo bounce, being that, you know, everyone sort of thought, well, everything's just, everything hasn't changed. I mean, Australians don't like change anyway. That's why I've still got a queen. <laughs> yeah, we had, I mean, like double digit referendums and only seven of them have ever passed because Australians don't like change. You know, so the Prime Minister stayed, the property market started rising again. Bresick Whitney came up with a new auction fee model to, you know, help stimulate the market, I think, because, you know, with the low volumes that we've had this year, vendors would think twice about paying an auction fee up front. So now, Bresic Whitney have come up with a model where you only have to pay a certain amount to book the auction and then you pay the auction Mm. fees on success. And that was pretty interesting. So again, this is 2020, you know, everyone says be more consumer focused. Well, that's just a great example, I think, of a real estate company actually putting the consumer first. And I think over 2019, we've also seen a lot of introduction of different sale models as well. They've really come to the fore, you know, so traditionally it's just been a sale by private treaty and auction. And now there's a whole raft of different platforms out there that's facilitating the transaction in a different way. Yeah, definitely. 2019 Mm. has not only been the year of climate emergencies, banking emergencies, but it's also been the year of online auction platforms, I think, with those sort of springing up for people that don't necessarily like loitering on someone's front yard lawn of a (laughs) Saturday morning, but, you know, like prefer to sit behind a computer. So, yeah, so, I mean, that's that's been interesting from that perspective as well. Consumer focus, Chris, I know that that is a hot topic of yours. Where do you think agents need to be? In the next year, I don't know, look, I, I think it's hard to draw a circle around the whole industry. I think you know, for me, it's very you know, community to community, suburb to suburb, city to city. I think what you said though is right. I think it's the customer centric. What can we do as an organization right now to help consumers, you know, again maximize their experience with our agency? I think that is really the key. And you know, again, for some, that's going to be you know, we're going to boardroom auctions. For some, is we're shifting, you know, we're going to have a different new auction model. Um, you know, for others, we're just going to make sure we call 100% of buyers. But whatever those things are going to be that we're really thinking about our market and thinking about, we live in an age of ratings. We live in an age of testimonials. We live in an age of making sure that your agency, however you're doing it, is, is maximizing your customer service is going to be critical. Any additional thoughts there? Yeah, Chris, you're spot on there. It really is a, a shift to putting the... Well, it's not really a shift because it's always been there, but the customer needs to be at the centre of everything that you do. Even if you've done it, because a lot of people say, but we've always done it this way. You know, if it's not serving the customer, I think you've got to start thinking very differently. Absolutely. Uh, It's just the simple litmus test is how would you like to be part of this transaction? If you're on the other end of the stick, what would your expectations be? Good, good way to ask it. All right, jump in July. So actually, we did something exciting in July. We kicked off our Street MBA program in July. That was a big deal for us. Congratulations. So, yeah. So what that is is taking agents who are keen to learn from some of the best in the business on a bit of a tour around Australia. So we had lots of networking going on, lots of learning, and and that's probably been one of the highlights of our year actually is seeing these people really, you know, because some, sometimes it is kind of hard to take everything in in a big arena. So we just quietly did this and started in Radelaide and yeah, Owens Castle and Toop yeah. and Toop and and put the rat in Harris, Radelaide. Yeah. yeah, so that was pretty cool. We'll continue that into the next year. Also in July, we got a new Governor-General in July, but that wasn't anywhere near as exciting as keeping the same Prime Minister. And then Doug Driscoll, CEO of Star Partners, put out an opinion piece which got a lot of people talking about the real estate sector has reached its technology intersection, meaning that, okay, we've got enough tech now, now we need to start getting more human. 
Doug's a bit of a thinker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, actually, we're going to get him on the podcast next year. But I, I tend to agree, actually, that we might be at a bit of an intersection because at the moment, I think we've reached a bit of a saturation point where people hide behind email too much and hide behind electronic communications too much. I say 2020 is bringing back the year of the human conversation. There you go, boys. What do you think about that? Well, look, I've spent my whole, you know, 18-year career teaching people how to get in front of people and do a better job face-to-face, do a better job in the living room, better job on the telephone, and better job with a mindset about that. And we are at a place, and a lot of the younger agents, I'm sure, would prefer to text or email and not and not pick up the phone. But it just actually went through an interesting experience and without going through my story. But I went through the process of selling my house this year, which is a really, you know, was a really an amazing experience and, and experience as a buyer as well. And I live in Melbourne and there's a, a couple of the agents and I won't name names here, but, you know, having said that a couple of the agents, the phenomenal ability to bring the human touch to both sides of it and the buying side where I've got an agent uh, ringing me up and saying, um, Hey, listen, I um, want to have a conversation, you know, with you about this. And they leave a message and then follow that up with a text message. And say, hey, Chris, left you a message. Call me. I'll talk to you about this interesting conversation I had. And just utilizing, I think, all of it, right? So working out, again, a system that if you're going to call, you leave a message, shoot them a text as well. Just said, just left you a message. Shoot them a text about what it's about so they actually see it. And, and you can start to think about, you know, again, how, you know, agents can use both. I forever have talked about break down the e-wall. You know, that we get in games of e-pong and the e-pong is I email you the proposal, they email a response, I email to find out whether you've read the proposal, you email me back, I email and, and an e-pong goes back and forth and back and forth. And, and this idea of saying, let's break down the e-wall and what do we have to do again to have more real estate conversations in 2020? to be more personal, better personalized service in the way they want it. And just to, you know, love real estate, love this interaction with human beings, love helping people in that process. Okay, August, September. So Rockend was taken over by MRI Software or acquired by MRI Software, which was a big deal. You're living in the second second best city in the world, Chris, ha. being Mel- Melbourne. The Global Livability Index was released. 80th anniversary of the Batman comic. Like, you know, I know you. <laughs> you guys will be impressed with that fun fact. That's one to impress your vendors with. Oh, look, I think the other thing in September was, you know, so it was really the start of the bushfire season with, you know, sort of 100 odd bushfires that were burning for after the week long heat waves there. Again, climate emergency. And we've seen that come through, you know, continue through for the year as well. So it's been a, uh, it's been a shocking start to the bushfire season, but there's been some amazing, amazing events that have been surrounding that as well. Just was watching an interview with a woman on television and she was in third generation firefighter. These firefighters are just unbelievable to me. Absolutely unbelievable mm-hmm. to me. And I just thought this was a really cool thing she said. She was talking about how her mom was also a firefighter. She said, my mom works a fire better than anyone else I've ever met. And I love that term. And I'm sure it's a term they know, but I didn't know it. And this term to work the fire. I love this. Like, cause you know, there is fire for all of us, right? And sometimes we start our own fires and sometimes the fire is the market, but I love the term to step in and work the fire. And you know, it's not a panic situation for agents. It's not a panic situation for property managers. It's really saying, this is my situation. What do I have to do right now to work the fire? Little metaphor that I thought would fit in September. Anyway. I, I think that's great, actually, and, and I suppose there's a useful belief right there too because if the, the only useful belief that a firefighter could have is I'm going to go and work this fire. Exactly. Okay, October. So we're coming into spring. Well, we have come into spring again, and volumes are back somewhat. Auction clearance, well, actually, auction clearance rates are back. Interest rates are down, but volumes are still down as mm. well. So we've got an in excess of buyers who have – found their confidence again, but sellers are still saying, wait and see a little bit. So really interesting market conditions in October as well. So Domain and Rate My Agent partnered up. So that was kind of interesting in terms of what you were saying earlier, Chris, about it being a ratings world. And then there was another, so Soho, so they're an interesting crowd actually, and probably one to watch again next year. So Soho is Jonathan Louie, who owns Airtasker, which is, you know, like, let me get 
my IKEA furniture put together or some of those little tasks. So he owns this app called Soho, which allows you to follow property. He says it's like the LinkedIn for property. Mm. And they developed a Tinder type thing, which gives users the power to swipe yes or no on real estate listings. So October, pretty interesting month. So here's the problem, Chris, and I don't know how you solve it, is that we are being rated yep. constantly. What do you think is the best way to ask someone for a rating? or to ask somebody for a review? I mean, I, th- I think it's critical that they do get reviews. And it might be picking one with, you know, if you have 20 vendors, maybe you just pick 10 that you want to go back to one and 10 you want to have Google. But I think it is important to be proactive every time just to say, hey, look, we're happy with everything. What would mean a lot is if you would take the time to do this. I think trying to give people a deadline is really important to say, hey, look, we're actually reviewing all this on Monday. I'd mean the world if this weekend you could actually sit down and actually get that done for me. Because I find one thing with testimonials or reviews, if you just leave it open-ended, people don't do it. Um, so if you can somehow give them a, a time frame on why they might, it would help them if you do it this weekend, be great. But it's huge. It's, it's big. Like, you know, people do look at them, right? I think the other thing is too, what I'm hearing from some of the big companies is they have certain competitions. Like this is how important it's become for real estate agents now. And I I did a course as well myself in November. It can affect your actual advertising rates. So if you've got 500 five-star reviews on Google and you're trying to own some keywords in real estate, your cost per click will be lower if you've got better reviews. Mm. So it's it's now become more important than ever. So I think useful belief, that's part of your process. Useful belief, nothing wrong with it, and I think we need to be bold. And I think also the other thing is set the expectations as to what effort is going to be required to also put the review in. Uh, a lot of people put off doing the review because they think, oh, I've got to think of something, I've got to write, you know, sort of a thousand words, and it's got to be, you know, so sort of really well articulated. But even if you are able to provide a almost like a pro forma or the type of information that you're looking for, it makes that barrier to action a lot easier. I think that's great, Mike. Yeah, I agree. And I think um, if we could ask Santa for something, I know what agents would want and they're probably, I hope they're about to all nod with me, is that there needs to be some sort of interface between review platforms because I think what they're finding really difficult at the moment is can I have a testimonial for my website and can you rate me on realestate.com.au and rate my agent and Facebook and Google? <laughs> that was my point about splitting it up. I, I don't think you can ask people for four. I think if you get 40 vendors, you want four different platforms, you've probably got to just split them 10, 10, 10, 10 and try to yeah. – it, it's a bit rich probably to ask a vendor for four different. The important part there is as well is to ask them to – do a review on the platform that is most appropriate to that person. Perfect. You wouldn't be asking a uh, Gen Xer to put a review on a platform that's not... On TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, we've got to check Good that point. out this year. Good point. I asked my 17-year-old daughter about TikTok and she was horrified. She said, Mum, you did not just ask me about TikTok. <laughs> so, she probably doesn't want me on there. Well, you know, like uh, Gary Vaynerchuk is saying that that's one to watch and a place where you can get early traffic next year too. So, you know, particularly for you younger, younger agents, might be worth checking out. We are up to November Domain announced the acquisition of real-time agent, and this is interesting. So they're a platform which digitize key steps in the property journey, including agency agreements and all, and auctions, contracts, that sort of stuff. I think that's a very interesting data play. Holly Komorowski was named Agent of the Year at the areas, and frankly, I think she should be named Prime Minister of Australia, Holly Komorowski. <laughs> <laughs> she's such a legend, and obviously she's on the cover of our December issue. We, we do love Home by Holly. Yep. You know, so bushfires continue to burn. So this is this theme throughout the year, this climate emergency theme. And also, this is something I spoke about at a conference this year. Queen Elizabeth II confirms she is no longer buying clothes made with real fur. And I think this is, um, again, as a, as a mother of a generation Z human, you know, I think back in whenever it was the eighties, people wanted to buy a Birkin bag or a Ferrari because it was a status symbol. The millennials want to rent it because they prefer to having their smashed avo. And generation Z are more concerned with right. how was the crocodile treated that made the bag, you know, and I actually think that just like climate emergency is something to be mindful of in your business going into the next year. I think being part of a company where you can be proud of the values and aspects that 
maybe haven't been thought of so much like sustainability and things like that on the inside are going to be things that people have to think about. Yeah, oh, look, I think that your audience that's going to be looking at you and your standing in not only the community but socially is going to tell a story about your culture, your ethic, you know, so whether that gels with their own social viewpoints. Interesting that Queen Elizabeth II did make the announcement to um, no more fur. No yeah. more fur. Yeah. I think it gives us the opportunity to be able to pause and reflect on the way in which we, what our social picture looks like. I do too. It sort of goes back to that tribal thing, doesn't it? You know, I think to attract top talent, you're going to have to look at what that top talent wants next to you or what they believe in and make sure that your brand story reflects that. What are your thoughts, Chris? What are you seeing coming through in the younger generations that you're coaching? I, I joke that uh, I've seen so many agents over the years come to me with their videos and of the, Chris, take a look at my new promo video. And if it's them pulling up in the Porsche, they're doing the auction. You know, at 750, barely sold, sold, sold. You know, Tina Turner's pumping in the background. It's simply the best, right? You know, it's got this sort of pump up sort of whole thing. That's not what people want today. People want authenticity. They want real. They do want you to be a part of an organization that represents sustainability and represents, you know, values that are consistent with theirs. And I think every agency needs to be conscious and aware that we need to move away from some of the ego driven real estate and move back into authenticity driven real estate flat out i think there's four words right now that could drive your business i think authenticity i think knowledge number two there's just no excuse right now not to know your stuff you've got to know your stuff uh, i think certainty you've got to be certain about what message your brand represents and i'm a big believer in presenting that with simplicity you know and i think they're, they're sort of the four pillars i'm going into the year with which is uh, authenticity knowledge uh, certainty and simplicity so December, so we're not really done with December yet and anything could happen. So I'm not going to ask you for any predictions unless you've got a crystal ball there. Anyone? Anyone got a, a crystal ball? I wish. <laughs> so Chris, what are your plans for Christmas? This is the time of year. Nobody really has gigs in December and January. So um, I'm actually doing a big road show right now for the Navy, which is amazing. So we're teaching sailors around the country around useful beliefs. So I'm spending December, the first part of December in, uh, in Cairns, Darwin, Perth, Sydney, you know, working with uh, the Navy. And then I get to take seven weeks off. And I'll, I'll be coming back in, uh, after Australia Day doing kickstarts for real estate companies. So we got a bunch of them lined up. So I'm looking forward to that. Refreshed and recharged. Absolutely. And what's on your reading list this holidays? I've got a few uh, sort of stacked up here to read. And I've got a few uh, friends of mine who've got a few books that I've, I'm a little backlogged on. There's an international bestseller sitting in front of me right here called Thinking Fast and Slow, uh, which oh. is a heavy duty read, actually. But obviously, for me, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time, you know, in that space around, you know, how we control our thinking and moving into that space. I've got a book here as well uh, by Robert Greene called Mastery, which I've had a probably third. I'm actually in the I've started a book by Sarah Wilson called First We Make the Beast Beautiful, which is quite a consistent idea with useful belief because, you know, there is a beast, there's reality, there's adversity, there's difficulty, there's challenge. That's the beast. And before we can deal with it, we make the beast beautiful. That's a useful belief about how we deal with adversity. So I'm fascinated to see uh, her take on, on that as uh, I continue down that path. Is that Sarah Wilson, the I Quit Sugar Sarah Wilson? Yes. And what about you, Mark? What's your... For my side of things, it's definitely going to be the opportunity to be able to switch off a little bit this time every year, take the opportunity to work on the business as opposed to in the business mm. and not necessarily you know, sort of on the tools but just engage the brain in a bit of 1,000-metre thinking rather than write with your nose on the paper. A bit of creativity by the yeah, pool. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Chris, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us today and for sharing this special Christmas edition of the podcast. My pleasure. With us. It's, it's actually one of the most fun ones we do all year. If there was one thing that you'd like to leave the gang with uh, as a parting Christmas thought or wish or something like that, what would it be? I think it is just in this world of distraction and noise for us all to get to a place where we go, you know what? 2020 is is the time. And, you know, you hear people all the time talk about 2015, the market was better. 2007, it was better. 98, I could smoke at my desk. You know, you hear all the different <laughs> things people talk about. You know what? You know what I'd wish for people? But let's lock in. This is the best time in the history of the world to be in real estate. Best time in the history of the world to be you. It's all we got. This is our time. 
my wish for people would be to really wake up every day and look around and go, you know what? There's good, there's bad, there's everything, but I'm going to focus on the opportunities that I'm going to go get. Great thought. Chris Helder, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me, guys. And to everybody else, a very, very happy holiday from us, and we'll see you in the new year. To connect with all things Elite Agent, including the latest news, coaching, and features, subscribe at our website, EliteAgent.com. 